Hello, sealed for a reason tubers, and welcome back to Let's Play Final Fantasy VI Brave New World with me, Blue Angulo. So today, we're going to continue the main story. This is not the party I'm going to use, but I want to show off how far they got and uh, give you sort of my overall impression of them in this first section of the game, because this is one of the big upcoming uh, scenarios, so it's, it's a good point to get a couple level ups if you're playing along. Now, you don't need to be level 19 or 20. I was just a little bit more thorough than necessary. I was mostly trying to catch Gao up to see if he turned out okay. Um, at, I think at level 18, 19, 20 is about when you start gaining a noticeable amount of HP per level up. Uh, at level 18, I think he had like 380. Or it might be because I gave him... I don't think I gave him anything that boosts his HP. You could boost his HP a little bit with something like that. But uh, anyway, uh, the point is... Uh, I actually rather focus on his evasion, anyway. Um, this is the team that I'm not taking, and uh, this is the general logic behind it. Uh, Locke isn't bad. Uh, he gets his HP bonus here, which is very useful early on. Uh, you can see the spells he's learned. He's got some healing spells, some offensive spells. Uh, that's a pretty good combination, honestly. A bit of uh, fire, lightning, and curing. No problems there. Uh, his overall stats are pretty acceptable. He's fast. He's got acceptably good other stats. Uh, his equipment selection's a little bit poor. Um, Ninja gear, Gaia gear, I've bought a bunch of stuff like that. I, I made some money in between episodes. So he's pretty good with stuff like that. And uh, so on and so forth. At least he can use the swords, which gives him sort of elemental attacks. And uh, he can dual wield with his knives. So that's cool. But uh, unfortunately, there's very little to steal coming up. And he ha unless you spend... His limited MP, which he only has 90 of, he's rather short in multi-target damage. So you'd have to spend rel relatively expensive spells to do significant damage to an entire group. Uh, I feel like, at this point, he's pretty weak um, overall compared to other characters. Um, the strongest person on this team is probably Mog. Um, his dances uh, can do a ridiculous amount of damage. It's just, they're kind of luck-based, and a lot of times they'll do nothing, or they'll heal you when you don't need to be healed, or they won't heal you when you do need to be healed. And I have a hard time with that, but I've done some ex some experimenting with him, just running around, fighting a little bit. He actually is better than I remembered, or maybe they've buffed him in Brave New World. Either way, I give him a thumbs up. Uh, I'm not bringing him because I think Edgar does a better job still. Um, Edgar has similar stats and equipment, although I think Mog is kind of the medium class armor. Uh, whereas uh, Edgar is more of the heavy class armor. So um, Mog might have more middle tier sort of options like power armor. Uh, Edgar, as we'll see in a section second, is a little bit more limited in, in, in some of those areas. But otherwise, they're pretty similar with their, uh, their types of attacks. It's nice to go Dragoon and Sprint for both of them because they get their turns quicker. And if you want to jump, they do that quicker as well. So it works out pretty well. It's maybe not the most optimal, but I like it. And... Uh, at least for him, you know, his dances are great if you can get the right attack off. Uh, his magic is a little bit limited. Uh, he's got, like, Poison Elemental and Death Elemental, which unfortunately is not good in the next dungeon. I'm not sure if everything's immune to poison, but a lot of it is. And Death, eh, might not be worth all that much. And then, uh, just got some options, like Wind Element is kind of cool, but it's expensive. Like, this is an expensive spell to cast. So early on, you know, 25 MP, just like I was saying about uh, um, Locke, it, it's hard to, to, to value casting these kind of expensive spells very often. So anyway, uh, he was the closest one to making it to the, the full team this time. Mog's pretty good, but not quite my style. I still don't... Oh, also, because none of his espers give him HP right now, uh, he's a little bit low on, on basic max HP, although... His main, his base stats are still a lot higher HP than uh, Gao. And then there's Setzer, and Setzer is an odd duck. Um, I have to give him credit that Seraph has given him uh, an exceptional amount of MP early on in the game. Boosting his HP to keep him survivable uh, was a no-brainer, and then boosting his MP along with it has actually been pretty cool. So of all the characters, he could probably get away with the expensive spells uh, that he doesn't have. So all he can do is cast Cure 2 and Regen and stuff. If he had a better spell selection, I'd consider taking him. Uh, keeping in mind that his magic stat is still pretty miserable. Uh, it's better right now because I've boosted it up with all the uh, 
the the magic boosting relics, but uh, he doesn't get magic boosting equipment right now like uh, Celeste and Terra do. So other than the stat hat, you can steal off of the uh, the Onion Kids. There's very little thing. There's very few things that boost his magic power. So he's only at like a 30 base magic power right now, and I, I guess you could technically uh, rank it up with Choat, but then you're not gonna have the HP to survive. So. Anyway, he's okay, but um, I don't really like his skill very much. His uh, his uh, slot machine attack is not my favorite. I'm not a huge fan of the cards and darts and stuff. There's another one. There's dice for 10,000 gold that I just didn't have the money for. Uh, and I know the mechanics for dice. It's probably not that great. So um, I give him a kind of meh out of 10. Not that impressive. And then there's Gao. I, I don't know about Gao. I mean, that... I think the best thing you can do with him is get his evasion as high as you can. 94% uh, evade is pretty good, you know, not too many enemies are going to hit him, so... He's got pathetic HP, but if you put him in the back row and give him as high of a evade as you can, uh, with these two both give him, a, I think, plus 10 evade. That's why I'm using the Zephyr Cape, which I usually don't like, but... Uh, good evade is good evade. Back guard does help the party out a little bit with less... I think it completely prevents uh, enemy strikes first type things, so that's good. And he does get that shield, because there's nothing else you can equip here. Uh, so that's something. And if you give him the right armor, they each give him plus 10 in uh, evasion. It adds up pretty well. Uh, one of the weaknesses here is he can only equip one Esper, and that's Stray, which uh, doesn't really give him any good spells either. So no spells that are really that valuable. His Esper, like, I haven't even spent his Esper levels, because I don't know if stamina is going to help him at all. I'd rather get HP or Vigor... Or magic. I, I, I assume most of his magic type uh, rages use use magic, which is the one we want. So I don't think at this point in the game he's got the right espers to be useful. And I know some of you guys probably love him, but in my experience, Mog's random dances have been far more reliable than Gao's random rages. Uh, on the other hand, I have spent some time getting more. Um, I'm not going to go through them all, but like any enemy that we fought... Oh, I mean, I don't know if I've got them all that we could get at this point, but if we fought an enemy that unlocked a rage in the Velt, I spent a fair amount of time trying to find them. So I know Defender's new, Cephalid was new, I think Adamantite was new, Chimera was new, there, there's a few in here. I think Flan we picked up, um, Onion Kid, Rhinotar maybe, I think that might be it, maybe Spike and, and Rain Man. But uh, yeah, th his attacks with these seem... To me, anyway, they seem kind of mediocre, like, like a good Mog Dance does a lot of damage. Like, uh, a good attack might, might do 500, 800 damage to enemy group, uh, and a really rare attack, the 1 in 16, might do 2,000. Most of Gal's Rages are doing, like, two or 300, so I, I don't know, he just seems a little bit weak. So anyway, that's the off team that uh, I think is the wrong choice. Ah, uh, sorry, I gotta change save here. The choice that I do think is good is this group. Now, for one, you need to bring Terra anyway, so we're heading to uh, the sealed cave here. This trying to progress the collect quest, right? And uh, I feel like this team is stronger. Now, you could argue switching Cyan for Mog, and I wouldn't disagree 100%. But then you'd have to buy two sets of Dragoon Spear stuff. Eh. But um, anyway, so the difference here is um, Terra gets a lot of spells, and... Uh, a lot of them are really good, so Cure is good, Remedy is good, uh, Break is potentially good, and she's got a lot of MP to cast it. Um, Storm is pretty awesome, Regen is life. Uh, these spells are acceptable, uh, Shell could be useful, Reflect has some really, really good strategies, like, you know, reflecting enemy spells back on them could be amazing in the right situation. Also, her, um, her stats, like, she can get much better stat ups, either MP, or H this is mostly what she's got so far, just to get her HP high, but uh, she's got kind of better options for, for magic, plus she learns fire on her own. She will learn fire 3 at some point, but it'll take a while. So uh, yeah, I mean, she's got lots of good magic. You have to bring her anyway. Um, her stats are very magic focused, so her magic damage does a lot. Uh, you don't need to go dual wielding, you could give her a shield, but uh, I kind of like the offense. And you can also get an elemental sword that boosts her magic even more to go with these kind of equipment. So I like it. And for now, I'm just leaving her with the magic uh, relics. Although I might change one or the other to something. Um, one of the small changes is I've sold a bunch of the just blind or poison relics. So I've got four spirit rings if we want to use ma uh, 
Blind Poison or Death Resistance, and I should have four of these as well. Uh, there were some... I think before we had a Relic that was just Berserk and Muddle. The Amulet is clearly superior because it's Stone, Berserk, and Muddle. So I've cleaned the, the inventory, the, the Relics up a little bit. But she's all about magic. We've got Cyan, who is not the strongest character at this point in the game. Um, he did learn a new uh, sword tech here, and Dragon's pretty awesome. I'll show that off in the next couple battles. Um, it ignores defense, kind of like Dispatch does, but it does more base damage, and it cues off of his uh, stamina stat, which he has been raising, because we've been raising his HP and his stamina together. So, uh, Dragon might turn out to be pretty awesome. His spells are actually pretty acceptable. I talked about it before, but he's got a, a good supply of the basic healing spells and a couple a couple offensive spells here and there. They're kind of expensive at this point in the game, but uh, I don't know. We're going to try him out. I know he gets a unique sword in this next dungeon, or at least he should, so that'll help him a little bit. And for now, I gave him the uh, regeneration and uh, pre preventing enemy back attacks is quite useful, so uh, that's good. Uh, next up, quick one is Sabin. Everyone loves Sabin. He's got all the elemental claws, so we can mix and match as we need. He can use Gaia gear, which is also pretty awesome. That's one of the things a lot of people can't equip, uh, and it provides some earth protection. Um, so that's good. I've given Sabin um, perfect hitting, and the stat stick is just there because I didn't know what else to give him. If we run into status inflictions, which I'm pretty sure we will, we'll probably equip the spirit ring or the amulet to most people. Once I, once I know what we're into. Uh, and then Esper-wise, um, Sabin doesn't have a lot of options. He can go pure stamina or HP. For now, HP is probably better, just so he doesn't die. But um, his spell selection is pretty weak. Uh, it's nice to have someone with float, but otherwise, uh, that's not why we bring him. His blitzes are pretty fun. So i got to show off Mantra so you can see how much that does. And uh, as usual, his other abilities are pretty strong. I like the, uh, the multi-target type stuff, you know. And then finally, we've got Edgar, our other Dragoon. A um, couple options for weapons. Like I said, his, his equipment might be slightly different than Mog's. Or the, exactly the same. I'm not even sure. But uh, yeah, he's got some cool stuff. Giving him the uh, the jump and the speedy jump. And his... I think his Espers are a little bit more useful than Sabin's. Because he gets a bit of healing and remedy. Uh, his haste spell is pretty useful. And uh, yeah, these aren't that good. But I feel like he's got a lot of... Uh, viability and um mostly everyone here has like seven or eight hundred at least hp which is quite good anyway enough rambling about the characters i just figured it's a good little break point in the uh series to talk about them a little bit so what i really want to do is go to the imperial base which is surprisingly empty so you may remember that the last time we were here there was soldiers everywhere and they'd kick you out if you got into a fight um, maybe they left their treasure unguarded or something? No, still can't get in there. So, um, you know, there might be a couple alarm bells going off in your head saying, Blue, uh, where'd all the soldiers go? We haven't, like, all we did was blow up their magic research facility. I don't see why they'd stop defending this, uh, super important sealed cave, but who knows. I believe if you try to go through the Imperial base without Terra in the party, you get sent back by plot. You hit a plot wall. So anyway, this is where we need to go. Now I'm gonna put a save down because some of the enemies in here are cheapskates. I think we'll be fine, but just in case something bad happens. Alright, so we got apparitions. Let's see if I can do my blitzes today. Of course not. Great start. Um, oh, also, I bought the drill for... Uh, Edgar. I believe it will do half damage in the back row, but it gives him a targetable um, defense-ignoring type attack. Also, while oh, I'm thinking about it. Yeah, it, it's probably doing lower damage than you'd like because he's in the back row. And there's your dragon attack. It does a lot of damage. Uh, if you've gotten it already for Cyan, I feel like he's a pretty good option for this dungeon in Brave New World. If you're playing the base game, Cyan, unfortunately, is pretty bad here. You'd probably be better bringing off Mog, almost for sure. But you can kind of see, like, who can do the most damage here. Like, the Aura Bolt is exceptionally good against them because they're weak to Holy, and I believe they're weak to Fire. 
So you can see the people that can really dish out damage to that group. If Fire Dance had worked, <coughs> um, it would have killed the entire group, I'm pretty sure. Demon's Bane. Alright, so this is an interesting weapon. I'm not even sure if I've got anyone that can equip it, actually. I guess we'll just have to look at it. So if you brought Locke, or probably Setzer, you could equip this. Um, yeah, all the, the knife users. It's uh, funny how Bushido works, but um, Cyan can't equip it. It's Holy Elemental, which actually makes it a pretty good weapon for this dungeon. So bringing Setzer or Locke might be a good idea. I was thinking this would be one of those instant killing uh, weapons, which is not going to work here. Um, you'll find instant death attacks are not optimal. But uh, it turns out it wasn't. Holy water. Okay, well, fine. Now, there's quite a few enemies in here that I'd like to run into just to sort of unlock them for the Velt. Because uh, you might not be able to come back in here later on. Maybe. It's one of those dungeons where if you miss some chests or you don't encounter some enemies, you may never get to. So far, so good, though. Apparitions are probably the easiest encounter. Alright, so this room, if you wait for just a second, anytime now, has tricky bridges, basically. So you gotta pay attention to where the safe spots are, and then move when it's safe. Um, having your uh, running shoes, whatever you've got equipped for, for dashing, uh, makes it a lot easier. Some whites and some Antares. I believe these are all three of our enemies we can fight in the first couple areas here. Um, I think they're all strong to fire, actually. Yeah, so unfortunately the Hell Claw won't work. They probably take double damage from uh, the Ocean Claw, though, I bet you. So we haven't used Flurry too much. As Cyan gets more powerful, that attack will become pretty good. It also confuses enemies. So, um... You know, there's that, like, if, if you enjoy confusing enemies. Just turned himself to stone, that's pretty good. So I do like, I really like Sabin in these kinds of dungeons, because, like, if you don't like his elements, you can just change them, and he's always got, like, a non-elemental blitz that's easy to use if you want. Warp Whistle, I think you just use it to escape battle. Uh, I think we just stand here, and here... Hey, Kazakiri, that's the one. Oh, that was freaky. What's going on? Uh, I believe to get to the bottom right, though, we have to go this route, if I remember correctly. It's interesting because the bottom right section doesn't switch. Uh, oh, shoot. Okay, good. Um, it doesn't switch until you're on this side of the map, basically. All right, so Kazakiri. So unlike the Nodachi, which is uh, a chance to instant death on attack, which is actually bad here. Kazakiri has a very unique special ability if it if it triggers. Hopefully we can show it off in battle. But this is like a wind elemental sword, which uh, is pretty rare, actually. Now we're in a new section, so we'll be fighting new enemies. Hopefully I met all the enemies you fight in the first area. I remember that the floating guys here are the problem, generally. So they've got a darkness attack. That doesn't bother me too much. I'm pretty sure everything here is undead. Oh yeah, and I bought a bunch of remedies and stuff between uh, episodes. Just so that I wouldn't run out. Guess the uh, Zombones have quite a lot of HP, by the way. Alright, good. They're not, they're not strong to fire here. Oh, also... Let's see what this does, because I haven't used it off. Let's see what- let's see if I can put in Mantra. It's a pretty good time for it, right? So it should heal all of his allies based on his stamina. So in the original game it was sort of better there, because it would have just healed 739 HP to the whole group, like his- his current HP. But I say better, if he was almost dead, then it would do very little, so... You know, take your pick, which one you like more. But 
But yeah, I feel like we've got a pretty strong team for this group. I'd like to show off Cyan's special attack. Uh, you shouldn't... It shouldn't trigger on a... A, a sword tech or a... Uh, whatever we're calling them. Bushidos. So we'll need to do a regular attack for it to happen. Also, you could, you could bet that if I brought Mog with uh, the same equipment here, he'd be doing similar amounts of damage. Maybe not quite as good. So you're probably saying, Blue, this dungeon looks really easy. What are you talking about? Well, I did bring what I consider to be a much stronger party than average. No randomness and pretty good, uh, pretty good handling for undead enemies. Early on in the game, it's difficult to get holy elemental damage. Uh, fire is not so hard, but uh, pure holy damage is pretty good here. And then we've got um, Terra for generic heals. There we go, we got it. So every, I think it's like 50% of the time or something like that. Instead of uh, just a normal attack, Cyan will get a sort of wind slash attack. And it does a great amount of damage for this point in the game. So, um, you know. I, I, that's basically the reason I brought Cyan is because he had a custom sword. So we can kind of sneak around here, the back route. We'll have to find a way to open up a, a path to that chest. Now, I assume the Aura Bolt will be stronger here, but, uh... Just, oh, there we go. Oh, that's a bad idea. That's a really bad idea. They're undead, so the draining is actually reversed. <laughs> Sabin nearly killed himself. I should switch off the water, or the ocean claws, because, um... That's not gonna work against undead. In the first area, we fought a lot of, like, sort of fire-immune enemies. Uh, in this area, they're actually fire-weak, so kind of want to switch it up. Or just stick with your Aura Bolt. Yeah, Aura Bolt and Fire Dance, I would say, make this section a lot easier. The first couple rooms... Uh, they don't... Well, the first couple rooms, the, uh, the fire dance doesn't really help. But now, if you can input it, it's fine. If you're like me, though, you can't use it. So, yeah, unfortunately, the Ocean Claw is probably a bad idea just because of the, um... The, uh... The drain effect. The It's not like they absorb water damage or anything. But we do have Spirit Claws, which are Holy Elemental, so I expect this would work pretty well. Kind of went the long way here. No real reason for it. Oh good, and then... Well, no, these guys should be fine. The Holy Element should work just fine on everything here. Yeah, when when uh, Sabin can do 2300 damage with a regular attack, you know you're doing pretty well. But yeah, these enemies, yeah, it's not too bad. Aww. I remember, particularly my first couple times in here, uh, in the original Final Fantasy VI, this was like one of the first dungeons that gave me a difficult time. And, uh, I, I think that always made me over-prepare for this area, because in my head, this one's a really tough dungeon. This is, uh, a trap, of course. But it does open to something. Surprise, surprise, everybody. Oh good, so the little scorpion dudes will be immune to fire, of course. Uh, but you want to kill the Jin. He hasn't had a chance to do it yet. Um, um, the Ontari guys, they'll be... Uh, basically, Sabin and Edgar can't attack them, really. Unless we use specials. Uh, but yeah, the Jin guys, the, the floating sort of undead that we've been fighting here, they have a really nasty attack that they can do called Life Shaver. And it's, uh, it's kind of like a drain attack, but it can suck a ton of HP out from your character and heal it to the uh, the guy you're fighting. We're just sort of lucky, and to be honest, I am kind of focusing them down quickly. Uh, if you go after the Zombone first and ignore the Jin, or just deal a little bit of damage without killing them, um, which is why I wanted to do massive damage to them. Like, they've probably got like 1200 HP or something. If you did 900, and then... Um, and that black belt really worked well today. But yeah, let's say you like, you 90% you of the way killed them and then didn't quite finish them off. Um, not bad. Uh, they would probably use Life Shaver, and if you did 900 damage, 
There's a good chance that they would just do 900 damage to you in uh, return kind of thing. It's not guaranteed like that, but... Uh, it's also possible that Brave New World actually rebalanced this area to make it a little bit easier, for all I know. I know they've sort of nerfed some of the treasure in here, unfortunately. So I, I'm gonna just test, but I bet you poison would be bad here. Just, I got a feeling. Yeah, like I said um, before, I'm sure, pretty sure I said that. Your general poison element type stuff, not too impressive. That's why Mog's spells are kind of worse off. And then Edgar's just so good he doesn't even need spells. Who's this friend? It's our first ninja! Uh, there's probably something you can steal from him, but don't worry, we'll fight more ninjas in the future. This guy, though, should be weak to poison. Alright, so he's got all those cool moves that Shadow had. It's kind of like a little mini-boss, but I think we'll be fine. Oh, that'll be a little bit annoying. Uh, I should have used Aura Bolt, it turns out. I wonder if Dragon counts as magic damage? Let's find out. I don't even know for sure. Uh, any physical attack will miss on someone who's vanished, but magic will... the opposite of that. It'll never miss. Alright! Turns out that is a magic attack. Good to know, actually. Alright, he wasn't too bad. Just keep in mind that if you didn't go with, um... The HP boosting espers, um, 100 or 200 damage to the team is a lot more serious. We'll never find that treasure. But like, keep in mind, like most, I'm using like the characters with the maximum HP we could get with maybe one or two extra level ups than what you'd normally have. Um, it, you could easily do this dungeon with like 350 to 400 max HP, like how Gal looked. Um, those guys would be a lot more dangerous at that sort of phase. So his treasure was so hidden, you had to click the other switch. Uh, was there a secret in this room? No. There's there's another room that's kind of cavey like this in here that has stuff in it, I think. Better stuff. Anyway, one convenient thing about uh, Brave New World is they at least let you get free healing from this tile. Those red ones don't show up too often, so I assume they put it there because this dungeon, um, maybe seemed too difficult on testing or some such. I'm not complaining, though. So I didn't actually equip the uh, the Gale hairpin that gives you uh, preemptive strikes, so don't blame me for getting lucky on all these uh, easy battles where we get our first action. Also, one of the things that probably makes this easier, it's it's back to kind of normal style. The enemies aren't all counter-attacking every single thing we do, which maybe I'm just getting lucky and maybe if you brought you know, for all I know, if you bring Mog, everything, every time you use a dance, they might counter it, for all I know. But, um, we seem to be fighting enemies that don't do too well against physical damage if it's high enough. Like, we kill them in one hit, they don't get any counters, I love it. Also, I love Cyan's special sword. I'm so glad that Cyan is better than he was in the original game, because... I always liked him, but he had a hard time being uh, a main party member. I guess you can't go to the right there, you gotta go up and around. Sneaky sneaky, right? One of these days, maybe I should just show you how strong the, the Zombones, or uh, the Jin can be. We'll attack with uh, Terra, see if she can one-shot him or not. Of course, she gets magic. <laughs> well, that was just luck. Now, I do find with Cyan, sometimes you don't want that wind effect to take to take place. Uh, maybe as he gets to be a higher level, his or his vigor stat gets better. Single target, his physical damage might be higher than that wind uh, attack. I think we want to step on this. Open that. There's uh, quite a few little switches and puzzles here that I'm just going to sort of breeze through, but... I'm also pretty sure there's something in here that can cast, um, the zombie. Like, I expect the Zombones can probably turn you into a zombie with their, some sort of status attack. We just haven't been hit by it.
It's also possible that uh, we're getting this wind attack way more often than normal. I don't know what the odds of it are supposed to be. I thought it was like 50%, but uh, maybe it's 75 or maybe there's some calculation. Like, again, I don't know all the in-depth analyses and mechanics and formula. It could be that, like, uh, the Kazakiri's special attack is tied to some stat, like stamina or speed or something, for all I know. So, this looks suspicious, right? That wall there? See it? Let's go check it out. Ah, <sighs> poor Zombones and Jin. So you could probably use this area to level up pretty good, man. Like, I wasn't expecting this place to be so easy. I, I Maybe I did over-prepare. A couple extra level ups. A little bit of... I didn't... No, I, that's not true because I never used Sabin and Edgar to level up at all. Um, I was leveling up like Gao and Setzer. So these two are the same level they would have been without any grinding. Anyway, this is your super secret area, uh, if you consider it that way. And there was a different sword here originally, and it was much more unique. The Blood Sword has pretty good stats. Um, this is again probably not the dungeon to use it though. F fans of the Final Fantasy series, Final Fantasies, fan uh probably know the, the basic mechanics for the Blood Sword. Let's have a quick look. So, I guess it says it casts Drain rather than just uses it. Um, in some Final Fantasies, it just automatically drains HP when it attacks. It might still do that, in which case this is a very bad dungeon for it. Uh, if it just casts Drain, kind of like Sha uh, Sabin's uh, Ocean Claws, that's not bad. Um, unfortunately, because so many enemies are undead here, you actually don't want Drain, because that just heals your enemy and kills you, so... So for now, we're not going to use it, but uh, maybe later, maybe the next dungeon. Uh, let's see, so we've got... This chest up here, that has a switch. I believe that opens something to the right. There we go. So even if you didn't have fancy claws, you sold them for some reason, or you didn't find them, I don't know. As long as you can do that attack, these groups aren't very difficult. It does look like the, uh, the little magey type phantom guy, whatever his name was. Looks like he probably does have that counterattack on either blitzes or magic or something. So that doesn't help. <laughs> we gotta go around the long way. There we go. It's a weird dungeon. There's lots of little... Not really... I wouldn't, I wouldn't give them status as, uh like puzzles but there's a lot of switches to, to pull hey there's a normal attack good stuff i have a feeling the jinns are maybe weak to wind elemental because that did a lot of damage from well it was a back attack right we, we hit him in the back bonus damage for that so if you didn't hit the treasure chest switch because you you stepped on the switch that's how you get over there and i think it just lets you get that chest in the top right if i remember correctly I would expect pretty much all undead enemies are going to be uh, immune to stomp. They usually are, anyway. Looks like Terra's attack is like the weakest by a fair stretch right now. Or they're... it could also be they're strong against ice. I, I don't even know. Undead are often strong against ice, so that makes sense. Oh yeah, Phoenix Tears! We picked up a few of those now in this dungeon. Um, so Phoenix Downs are your standard, you know, cure death. Phoenix Tears are kind of upgraded ones that are specifically added to, um, Brave New World. Uh, they only work in battle, which is a small change, but they return you with good HP rather than, essentially, if you get touched, you get you die. So that's pretty cool. Hopefully we can get some more of those for bosses. And I think that's it. I don't think I missed anything down here. 
I'm gonna put a, a separate save just in case I miss something because like I said maybe we can't come back later uh, but I'm pretty sure that's everything I'm always happy when Sabin does ridiculous amounts of damage. That's perhaps my favorite thing when you get the double claw. Usually you'd have to have like the, the Genji gauntlet or whatever to get him double claws, but now you can just do it by default. It's so, so good. And, and at that, I've barely used any magic for this dungeon. That's great. You know what? I totally forgot. I was meaning to show off some of our different espers today. Like I equipped Maduin, which is uh, Terra's dad because you know, she's friend. Like. Maybe she'd like to have him around, and I totally forgot to show those off. Oh well. We'll get around to showing off all the espers at some point. I promise I won't forget. I just didn't think of it today. Because I wanted to get to this mysterious gate. Sealed, in fact. Yep. <laughs> Break a leg. So what's she supposed to do? Just uh, knock on the door? Maybe more for something? I don't know. Wait, what? Okay, change of plan. Don't open the door. No, seriously. Kefka always has a dirty plan. Look! He wants Terra to open the gate! It's a trap! It's always a trap with Kefka. But Cyan has something to say to that, I think. Cyan has some personal vengeance against Kefka. Another one of the reasons I wanted to bring Cyan here. Alright, let's kill him. He's got some friends. Unfortunately, we can't target Kefka right now, so we have to kill these guys first. They've got pretty good defense, though. Wow. Considering how much damage we were able to do to all the enemies in that last area. That even didn't do very much damage. Wow. These are, like, the strongest knights we've seen in the game, for sure. Maybe we should consider buffing up a little bit? I don't know. They've even got a heal spell. Look at this, the phalanx. Wow, that's a pretty weak heal spell. I'm pretty sure the Bile Blaster will deal with it. We need to get Sabbath in the front row though, so he can do more damage. Is that a counter on death or something? Yeah, or something. Uh, I was going to cure Imp, but I think it's more important to keep Edgar alive. You bastards! <laughs> I hate it when enemies do that! Alright, we got this. Maybe I should have hasted up and all that. So, keep in mind, we're struggling here a little bit. This is with all our extra stats and stuff, like I said. Okay, now, uh, Kieran would be nice, I guess. But let's try to heal uh, max HP here first. Alright, please. Uh, Berserk is going to be a bit of a problem. It, yeah, it did work. Let's, let's get rid of that. There. They would have poisoned themselves to death anyway, but we need to suplex Kefka as soon as we can attack him. That's the rule. We don't fight Kefka if we can't suplex him. Oh no! We're too slow! I wanted to suplex him again. So, she didn't listen to me. Now she's doing all kinds of color hair. Pretty sure this is a trap, Terra. Looks like uh, Kefka shrunk a little bit too, by the way. <laughs> oh, 
Oh good! That looked like Bahamut. Mm. Something evil. Such beautiful power, hmm. Well, maybe we'll be okay. Maybe it turns out these espers are stronger than Kefka. Hey, Taro. So, uh, I see you got the gate open. Uh, I'm not sure she was able to discuss it with the espers very well. And now it's closed. You just let a few out, hey? Oh, good. Now there's a landslide. Well, I guess we're never going home. Or at least she's never going home. Well. Looks like uh, the rock slide may have knocked Cyan out of his imp stat, too. <laughs> we better go back to the blackjack. So was this mission accomplished or mission failed? You guys will have to tell me in the next... Dang it, video game! Just want to get out of here, basically. That's all. But yes, um... Things are ha Wait a second, what kind of attack is that? <laughs> it's probably the, uh, turn you into a zombie attack, but... <laughs> I don't think that was the name it had in the original game. <laughs> Alright, good job, Edgar. So I think technically we could still go back, but there's a shortcut right there. So if you thought you missed something, you could go get it, probably. But, uh, this would be nicer. Come on, come on. No! Denied! I should show you what Storm looks like, then. Kind of MP overkill, but, uh... Oh, wow. Even Auto Crossbow would kill them all. These apparitions really aren't that strong, are they? Gotta fight those flanks dudes to get a real fight. Real challenge. Alright, well, we released the, uh... The Horde of Espers into the world. The Imperial base is still suspiciously empty. And we will deal with the consequences of our actions in the next episode. Thanks for watching, folks. Hope you have enjoyed, and have a great day.